Hello. Has anyone said hello to you today yet? Hello. Do you think she's really going to flush it? I'm glad she shared it with you because I didn't want to have that burden of that secret on my heart. So Southern Word has been bringing you poetry over the past six years. Have you enjoyed the poetry? Thank you to TEDx Nashville for creating such a huge and awesome platform for Youth Voice. We've been here since the first TEDx Nashville. How many people have been here since the first TEDx Nashville? Yeah? Not that many, a few. Do you feel older? Because when you work with young people, it becomes kind of like a family, and they even start calling you like a father to them. They'll point at you and be like, that's my daddy over there. Last semester, a college poet said to me, Ben, you're like a grandfather to me. (laughs) No joke. So I'm feeling older. Grandfathers are looking fit these days, right? Right? So we've been watching this, both here and around the city, and doing this work. And I wanted to come out and share what we've learned or or what we understand. Because I think a lot of people take, their takeaway is, wow, those are some incredibly talented and gifted and exceptional young people. And by the way, I don't think anyone's named them yet, have they? So that was Leslie Garcia, who graduated from Station Camp High School. (laughs) And now goes to Lipscomb University. Before her was Aiden Cassis. Yeah? Summit High School, going to Cal Arts next year. And then it was Lusso and Debria Tyler. Um, Lusso graduated from NSA. NSA goes to Trevecca. And uh, Trevecca. Um, and Debria goes to Oakland High School in Rutherford County. So I think the takeaway a lot, they get told, and we get told, wow, those are really some talented, gifted individuals. And it's different from how we understand the work, because we go into classrooms and after school programs every day, and we see young people transform through this work, through writing and through speaking. And when you see that, you understand the potential of all our youth. You go into classrooms and you see the potential for everyone in there. You understand that the 80,000 youth in Metro National Public Schools is an extremely huge potential resource that we're under investing in. And so I'm constantly trying to think of ways to explain that to people because our, I think our narrative around individual achievement and accomplishment, and this is taking nothing away from the hard work these guys have done to get to this point, um, is so strong in us that we have a hard time um, valuing the community. And this is really a product of community. So we took Lusso who was one of the first performers, and we traced his history with us back to 2011 when we met him in the library and convinced him to do a spoken word workshop with us. And he came pretty consistently throughout those four years doing the workshops. And a lot of the young people you see have been in a part of those workshops. And then the open mics and the small shows, the semifinal slam he lost, the semifinal slam he won, the statewide slam he lost, the statewide slam he won, to the national finals. He won the college slam last week, right? All to get to the stage. And I don't think people understand the the hard work and the amount of time it takes to get to that point. Also, and I'll preface this by saying, I have to acknowledge the board of directors and the advisory board and the supporters and the funders like the Metro Nashville Arts Commission and the Metro Nashville Public Schools and the Tennessee Board of Regents, Nashville Public Library, the foundations that have made this possible. We're not talking about them today, but they're critical in in having this happen. But what I wanted to focus on was the community of writers. Because a lot of people come to this community and they want to find the magic. They want to find the most magic in one person, either a mentor or or in a youth. And the reality is the magic's in the community. I asked Lusso to identify all the mentors over the years who have helped him develop as a writer. And this is just some of them. And some of them are adults, and some of them are his peers, some of them are college age, many have appeared up here. Some are younger, right, and will appear on the stage shortly, hopefully. 
interesting thing about this community is that over half are African American men. And in our society, I saw some recent statistic that, we, that our prison population is made up of 38% African-American men. And our teaching force is less than 2% black men. Right? So that's not okay. Right? So if our system is a lop like that, and you see a system like this, which is somehow counterbalancing that and putting... African-American men in schools, in educational situations, you would think you might want to grow it. So let me tell you something else about this community. We worked with over 4,000 students last year in five Tennessee counties. Um, 67 teachers, the classrooms of 67 teachers. And when you see young people transform, as I said earlier, in the classroom when a teacher says, that student hasn't spoken all year till you guys came in. Or a student speaks on something we're normally silent about in society, that's as powerful as the applause the young people get up here and is part of the power of this work. So f over 4,000 in schools, 750 after school, four college campuses in the classroom and as part of student life. And all that has allowed us, Nashville and Tennessee, to be recognized as part of the uh, Brave New Voices leadership cohort. What happened is that people have been seeing this work for 15 or 20 years. Two private individuals gave $10 million, and they were joined by the Ford Foundation and the Cerdna Foundation. Yeah, clap for that. And they've re-granted that to successful programs across the country, and we're one of 16 organizations that received this three-year matching grant. We're one of seven that have a full-time staff member placed with us for two years. I think we're the largest spoken word youth development and education organization in the Southeast. Yeah? And this was started just as from a bunch of writers going into schools, writing grants to go into schools and teach. It wasn't a bunch of grandfathers getting into a room and deciding Nashville needed spoken word. This was built from the ground up, right? Meanwhile, in Chicago, our affiliate there was just recognized and got the MacArthur Foundation Award for Effective Organizations using similar strategies. And so the question for Nashville now is really how will Nashville lead, right? We're successful. We will lead. I have no doubt about that. I've seen the hotels. I've seen the condos. I've been to some of the new restaurants. I've tasted the food, sometimes very good. I've been to the bars that make you feel like you're in Brooklyn. I didn't move to Brooklyn. They have a TV show now. They call it Nashville. They couldn't think of a better name than that. They just took our name. <laughs> Call it Nashville. That's, that's nice. Pedal taverns. I think we have national leadership in the pedal tavern category. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be successful, but amid this affluence and the success, we really have to understand and think about where we're going to place our heart and where we're going to place our values. And can we really be different? Are we going to value the art that made Music City, Music City? Are we going to tackle some of the impossible problems that no one solved, like education, public education, especially urban public education? Are we going to take that on? Because if we solve some of those problems, that's real. That's real leadership, right? So the question with this work for Nashville and for Tennessee is are we going to continue just to have a handful of exceptional, gifted, talented young communicators that go around and we celebrate? Or are we going to understand this as a system and a strategy and an intentional approach to grow strong communicators and normalize exceptional communication? So if you've cried or laughed or stood up and applauded a young poet in the past six years, I hope you'll come find Southern Word. I hope you'll come find Southern Word. I hope you'll come find Southern Word. I hope we'll see you next year. 
I hope we'll see you before that. Thank you.